So can you talk a little bit about how you feel about genius? For a long time, maybe it was just the people that I was around, but I always felt like being honest was quite hard. I was like 17 and had these massive boobs. And I was like, what? I don't know. <laughs> didn't even like really know how I thought about that or what to do with them. I didn't even have sex till I was like in my 20s. Because I think that I felt bad that I didn't, I hadn't worked out how I felt about these parts of myself. And I didn't want to like give that to someone else to deal with. I always remember being like very confused about how I should dress because I had this like curvy body and like all my friends were smaller, they could wear cool jeans, which I couldn't wear. And then I was like, well, what do I wear? And also being young and having big boobs is like, in some ways it's a little bit scary because like, you know, especially older men that talk to you. And now I'm like, I'm usually, I'll just wear whatever I want now. Even with the people that I was intimate with or whatever, it was, that's actually what it was all about. It was just like, body and I was like okay I mean I was like the girl with the big boobs basically one of the guys like later after I left high school years later and seeing a guy that I was friends with at high school at a party and we kind of chatted about the group of guys that we were friends with and he was like you do realize that we were all intimidated by you and I was like I didn't know that because no one ever really like kind of came forward and said that they might have been interested. I just never thought anyone was. But, I mean, yesterday I was outside in like a skirt with like a fitted tank top. And as soon as I walked into the bodega, the guy behind the counter was just like all about like throwing the compliments at me. Like, oh, you're looking beautiful today. I did have a guy kind of come up to me on the street and put his hands around me once. And that was like when I first got to New York. And the way that people function here is completely different to what I know back home. Mm. Like people are pretty reserved in New Zealand. And I always have been quite nervous to speak up when I'm uncomfortable. And I think modelling's taught me to, to do that. Um, so can you, has, have you ever been uncomfortable when you're modelling? Um, only once when I was very uncomfortable and I said, I can't do this. They want. <laughs> They wanted me to wear a cupless corset, like a corset without uh, cups. And I was like, there is no way I'm doing this. Had I been younger in the situation, being someone that hates conflict, being someone that hates to disappoint people or make people feel uncomfortable, I probably would have done it. Which is kind of sad because I think about all the girls that do do that stuff, who are younger, and being like put in these vulnerable positions where they don't feel like they have a voice. I panicked and I didn't, I knew, all these things were running through my head like what's gonna happen afterwards? Where are the images gonna go? Like all this stuff. I mean, it was a product shot. My body was like shouting at me, like don't do this. I felt completely by myself and I had to make a decision that was only for myself. They were like, okay, we'll just get the other girl to do it. <laughs> It's kind of that thing of like, you don't ask, you don't get. And like, I always try and say that to myself. You know what's funny is that I actually didn't have a problem with bathing suits until like recently, when I just couldn't find one. So I just didn't buy one for like three years. And I just wore underwear. <laughs> Which is another frustrating thing because I feel like people are made to feel unsure about themselves because of like, mm -hmm. options. You know, fortunately I can make my own clothes or I have been able to make my own clothes. So I can kind of satisfy that thing that I want or that I need. What has been your biggest struggle? I think for a long time, everyone kind of did think that I was, or I put out the image that I was like completely like fine how I was and da 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 da. And I am, but there are parts of me like my breasts that I think have made me they're that point where I go, oh, actually, you know? And then, but I never talked about it. I mean, I never wanted to tell, any time I was homesick or anything, I never even wanted to tell my mother on the phone that I was homesick because I didn't want her to like worry. Because I knew it would pass and it always does, but 
you know in that time and that goes back to that thing of being like lonely is because you feel like you have to deal with all your stuff all yourself by yourself I also came from a family of like providers I came from pe- from a family that are always like making food and like you know accommodating everyone and I think that I'm quite a sensitive soul and I mean I can be hurt quite easily but I've always been very quick to be like it's okay it's fine don't worry about it da, da, da. and that's another thing of like not voicing how you feel because you don't want to upset or cause a drama or you know be a pain <laughs> all the inside stuff that I wasn't sharing that I'm now realizing is the real sharing When do you feel the most vulnerable? I mean, I, ha- I have a sister who's been sick for a couple of years and, you know, as, as much as I deal with it in the family, it took me a long time to really talk about it with other people who might have been able to give me their experiences for me to use. I mean, I was always really nervous to talk about because it is a sensitive subject. And mental illness is a sensitive thing that people are also nervous to talk about. I felt guilty about the way that I felt about her situation for a while. I felt a lot of resentment. And that's really hard. Because it's your sister. And you love her. At the same time, there was a point where I was like, I should be allowed to feel like this. And I should be allowed to talk about it. And it's still something that I'm working on because it's still a current event in my life. She has a thing called Turner Syndrome. She was born with and is, has a, it affects everyone differently, but basically your body doesn't produce the growth hormone it needs to produce. So she was on growth hormone until she was a teen. But then on top of that, something happened and clicked and she kind of went into this really deep psychotic episode that she just hasn't come out of she has trouble processing life basically she has trouble keeping up with conversations because she processes it slower than anyone else but you know that's that whole thing of like we don't want to label we don't want to blah, blah, blah. and i think it took a, a while for my parents to be open about it as well from being my mother's support she's found it hard because Friends have distanced themselves from her because they don't know how to talk about it because they've never experienced it. We started six months before I went overseas. So by the time I was ready to leave, I felt like I couldn't be excited to leave. I was going to go start this whole new life and that's probably another reason why I never wanted to let anyone know I was upset. Because there was bigger issues to sort out, other people to think about. And that's like, I'm a big sister. It's like, I guess what I, you know? There was that responsibility. And your parents can say like, no, you live your life, you do your own things, you do you, do yeah. you, you know? And now from it, my relationships with everyone in the family are better off, better off. And also just like, try and still be a role model for my sister even though she is sick. Would you trade? Would you trade any Never. part of your body? 